So a big dump in the market on Friday as altcoins fare a lot worse than Bitcoin and Ethereum. And in this video, I'm going to go over why a certain altcoin might be seeing much more downside in the coming month. I'll also go over some technical analysis for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and also take a look at the big stuff you need to watch out for this week in terms of the macro environment. So let's get into it. Starting with the stuff you need to know. So this week, we've got quite a big data heavy week. So we've got the CPI and FOMC interest rate decision coming on Wednesday. So a big volatile day in the markets, probably stay away from the uh, leverage trade in that day, in my personal opinion. And also, of course, after the FOMC decision, you have Jerome Powell making his speech as well. So as I say, it could be a very volatile day, big decision on whether the FOMC are going to continue to pause interest rates or potentially look at a cut, even though that is seeming very unlikely. So big day on Wednesday and then the rest of the, uh, the week on Thursday, you've got PPI and initial jobless claims and not too much coming in on Friday. So Wednesday is the big day to watch out for. So with that in mind, let's go take a look at the Bitcoin and Ethereum charts. Starting with BTC then, and as you can see on the higher timeframes, the drop on Friday really isn't that visible, um, especially when you consider all the doom and gloom that is on social media, particularly on crypto Twitter. A lot of people um, really sort of down in the dumps after what happened on Friday, but it's really just the altcoins that suffer quite badly, as we'll see uh, in a minute on the daily time frame. Bitcoin really only dropped 5% wick to wick, so it's really not all that bad. And if we take a look at the weekly time frame, you can see we've actually got us pretty much our second highest weekly candle close ever on BTC. Obviously, our first, uh, our best weekly candle close was back on the 25th of March. We had one here on the following week, the 1st of April, which is in and around the same area as last week. But as I say, closing over those previous all-time highs of 69K um, and just another wick to the upside. So it still looks very, very good structurally. The big level we need to break over, of course, is this sort of 71.5K where this candle uh, on the 25th of March actually closed. But in terms of structure, still looking very good momentum wise, still looking great. We just need to break above that uh, 70, uh, what did I just say, 71.5K level, and then potentially to new all time highs. If we go down to the daily time frame, things look a little bit clearer. You can see we're still stuck in this daily range. So range high up at 73K pretty much all time highs, range low at 60.5K and a mid range of 66.8K, which we have held quite nicely back on the 31st of May and ever since then. And we've also been holding the moving average 21 quite nicely as well, which we pinged off on that dump on Friday, as you can see. So the level we actually rejected 71.5K, as I say, that's the big level we need to get over both on a weekly and a daily time frame, as you can see, many attempts. And to be honest, looking back on it, maybe it should have been a little bit more obvious that a pullback might have been coming after the two failed attempts to get over 71.5K on Wednesday and Thursday. But everything looked pretty good, especially on the lower time frames with momentum. Um, if we go down to the four hour, as you can see, everything was still looking pretty good. Um, so this was Thursday afternoon. We came down, retested the moving average 21, pinged off it. We're looking very strong. Momentum was with us. And then we had this bearish divergence play out. And then, yeah, big dump down to, we, we wicked down to about 68.5K. As I say, about 5% wick to wick. So really not that bad um, in the grand scheme of things when you consider the size of some dumps that we've had um, in the past. Really not all that bad. I think it was more the fact that it came a little bit unexpected for most people. But as I say, not really the end of the world. And at the moment, just sort of trending sideways, waiting for the US market to open, which is about half an hour from when I'm recording this. And we'll see what sort of uh, direction the market tries to make. It might be a little bit quiet up until Wednesday. Maybe the market waiting for all that um, FOMC and uh, CPI data to come out. And then we'll see the real move on Thursday. If we move on to Ethereum, then take a look at the weekly time frame again. In a bit of a no man's land, um, you can see we're potentially forming a bit of a lower high here from where we made that high back in March. We have got a little bit of support here at about 3.6K, which is a little bit clearer on the day time frame. But you can see this is where these weekly candle uh, bodies topped out here around sort of the end of March, beginning of April. So potential bit of support there. Um, below that, then you're probably looking at around 3,300 or maybe even this level down at 3, 3K down here. If we go down to the day time frame, let's take a look at it. So this is the big level we're trying to hold at the moment. This 3685 big level of support you can see all the way back from the 17th of March 
um, earlier this year. Flip to support, and as you can see, we've been holding it ever since. So this was the Ethereum ETF approval candle. You can see we held it as support there. We've been holding it ever since and also holding the moving average 21 as well. We're above the RSI 50 just about, and we've got green trend bars on the LC trend and momentum indicator too. So big important level here, as, as you can see today, held it on uh, Friday with the big dump. We held both this daily level and the moving average 21 and over the weekend as well. So today, quite an important day. If we see some weakness here, break below here, break below the RSI 50, then that momentum could send us downwards and potentially fill out this ETF candle here that we had back on the 20th of May. So potentially a drop down to this day level of 3,251. We'll have to wait and see, as I say, US market opening up in about half an hour's time. So we'll see how Monday plays out. But as I said earlier as well, maybe we won't see the real move uh, until Thursday after all the uh, data has come out on Wednesday. So moving on then to the big altcoin that I'm talking about. And as you've probably seen, it is of course XRP. And the reason I'm covering this state is because of this article that came out a little over a week ago now on June 2nd by a journalist called Vinicius Barbosa, um, an article from a place called Finbold, basically talking about how Ripple could sell 400 million XRP in June this month, which would be the largest dump of XRP tokens in seven years. So as you can see in the article, uh, every month, Ripple, which is the largest XRP holder and the entity behind the XRP ledger development, sells some of its reserve, which inflates the circulating supply. And this has been going on since 2017, as you can see. If we scroll down, you can see all the details of all the wallets. And you can see here the historical dump. So we've never seen a dump as big as this before. It has never totaled more than 400 million, as you can see. Um, the most recent dumps have been 226 million, 260 million, 240 million, 200 million, 200 million from January to May this year. But this month, it will be a, a huge 400 million uh, XRP. So could that have a big impact on price? We take a look at the XRP chart. So I've actually labeled all of the cells that we've had um, all the way through this year. So starting from January all the way up to the most recent one, which was the 30th of May. And as you can see, the majority of the time it has a negative impact on price. In fact, sometimes it is the start of quite a large swing to the downside, as you can see. So if we take a little zoom out onto the weekly time frame and take a look at some technical analysis on XRP at its current state, you can see we're in a big range, weekly range high of call it 70 cents, range low of 30 cents, and a weekly mid-range of 50 cents. And as you can see, we are literally just been sat on this weekly mid-range for quite a long time, basically since the beginning of April. What's uh, something to note as well, we have struggled massively to get above this weekly moving average 21 on the weekly time frame. As you can see, wick, 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 all rejection. So it's looking like XRP is looking very weak and we could well see another big move to the downside. Could this dump of XRP tokens be the trigger for it as well. In fact, something I wanted to show you is if we follow the wallet that contains the XRP that uh, is responsible for the dump, and you can see that uh, there was, uh, so here's the 400 million going into that wallet, and here's the 150 million that looks like it was sold on the 7th of June, which was of course on Friday. So was that part of the reason um, XRP had quite a, uh, quite a big pullback? If we go to, the daily, you can see that pullback on Friday for XRP was a 14% pullback, obviously not helping. So is the rest of the sale of the other, what, 250 million going to be the trigger for a big move to the downside on XRP? It's one of those things where you look back and you see that the signs were there, as I say, below the moving average, uh, failing to get above, below the RSI 50, We've got a trend, uh, red trend bar, the LC trend and momentum indicator as well. So if we were to see a big red candle, as I say, it's one of those where you look back and say the signs were there. Maybe a retest of these weekly range lows down here at 30 cents, although that would be quite a drop. Um, if you consider from today's price, that would be about 37% drop. However, if we are going to see a bigger correction from BTC, people have been talking about um, retesting 60s or 52K. Again, sounds pretty wild from here, but of course, anything can happen. We have seen 30% pullbacks in bull markets before so you never know we could chop our way through the summer and if that were to happen then we could easily see xrp drop 
down to those range lows of 30 cents and of course as we saw on friday altcoins faring a lot worse than btc and ethereum on friday as well so any sort of weakness from those two and if, and uh, altcoins are going to drop a lot harder and a lot faster of course if we take a look at the xrp btc um pair as well or the chart on the monthly time frame you can see big weakness all the way from august 2023 on the monthly time frame it's just been nothing but red candles in fact ever since august 2023 nothing but red candles below the moving average and heading back to its own monthly range lows of about 442 sat so potentially as i say are we going to see one more big drop to the downside maybe on the btc pair retest these monthly range lows bounce off that and then start showing some strength and on the usd side of things maybe a retest of these weekly range lows or there's a couple of levels down here maybe at 35 cents or a retest of this 41 cents area that we tagged a few weeks ago in april so if you're an xrp holder drop in the comments below are you worried about this are you keeping an eye on this do you think xrp could drop to 35 or 30 cents and if it does are you topping up your bags drop a like on the video if you enjoyed subscribe and uh, i'll see you on the next video